The nice thing about setting a paragraph of type is I can use this as a, a template to take into my two-page layout. So I can decide on the size, I can proof it on paper, see how that looks, I can set my leading, which is the amount of space between baseline to baseline. It's kind of interline spacing, right? And if I have less, oh, it gets really tight. Oh, and the general rule of thumb is it's usually set at a default, which is usually two points larger than your type size. So, you know, you don't want it too much, right? And you don't want it too little. It's kind of like Goldilocks. So usually two point larger at least. That's the absolute minimum. So I'm going to leave mine at 14. And then the other thing you have to work with is your tracking. And it's always set at zero, and that's never sufficient. So I think a good rule of thumb is to go with 25 and then see how it looks. And you really want to have a little pillow of space around each letter. So, you know, just copy it. And then I'm going to go into my layout create a couple of my text boxes. I'm going to make a two column layout here, so maybe something like that. And then I can option click and I can duplicate and kind of arrange something like that. And go on to my Word document and I'm going to Actually, I have to go back to my Word document and paste that. The rest of my paragraphs, the rest of Malia's paragraphs. And then I can start working with my, with my copy. I will, the first thing is when you, you know, put your, your type in, you have to kind of, Sometimes it doesn't go in absolutely perfectly. So you have to spend a little bit of time just, you know, doing your return and getting that, getting your paragraph set up. Okay, and then I get down to the bottom of my column and I still have some, some type in there. And I know that because there's this little box here and that tells me that there's, there's more, more type. So essentially all you have to do is with your black arrow tool, you're just going to click on that box. And then when you move off, your cursor changes. And that tells you that it's um, ready to be uh, connected to a new type column, which I have set up over here. So then I kind of go hunting. And you see, if you've got it set up, then it kind of shows up. And all you have to do is click. And then your text flows from one column to the next. And then you can, you know, you're on your way for getting the rest of the type in place. It looks something like that. And the thing about type is it's a little maddening because there's a, a lot of little details. So you, you need to kind of spend time doing your layout and then walk away from it and come back later because you'll you'll see things that you, you can't you can't see everything all at once. But I have here my type, and now it's a matter of deciding some fine tuning with um, the subheadings. So it could be that uh, the nice thing about Baskerville it has a few variations of the typeface. So I, I'm going to just do the. And now another thing I can do is I can set up another character style. So uh, once I have my character style set up. I can just make a new one and I can call this subheading. And then it, it can kind of help move it along. Uh, you can also just go up to your character window, but sometimes if you're working with a lot of body copy and you set it up then that can help. Okay, and the last one.
I had to click twice to get it to kick in. And as you can see, I've already got my parameter set, so it just it, it really facilitates kind of getting your, your type in there. I'm thinking it's time to deal with the color. And uh, I had in my, let me see here, I think my libraries, yeah. It's a nice thing if you take your color swatches and you turn it into a, a library, then you can move it from document to document. So when I look here, you can see that it has a bit of blue in it. I mean, it looks black, but it has some blue. There's a lot of different black. You, you, you don't just have to use, you know, 100% black. You can, um, you can use like a, a, a brown that's almost black, but it's still got brown in it. You can use a really dark blue that's almost black, right? There is some room to kind of have super good contrast with a dark typeface, but it doesn't have to be always like the same old black. I was kind of interested in uh, playing around with a different color, and I was thinking that that even this one, this kind of burnt red brown color, uh, that might not be completely appropriate. But I was thinking, you know, if we just kind of got darkened it up a little bit, right? It's starting to have more black in it, and I thought that was kind of a a nice color. So I'm gonna save that like so. At this point I'm going to turn off my my guides and my grid and everything so that I can see what I've got and that's really starting to take shape right my text looks clean uh, there's sufficient white space it seems to be uh, I don't have any I got rid of my hyphens right and my, my type is um, it's also justified. And you can work with a, a left alignment, and, um, or you can work with a justified text. And I like kind of using this one where it's justified, but it kind of lines up to the left. And you see, you have to watch because you never want to have in your columns, you never want to have a word at the end of a paragraph by itself. And I've got two instances of, of that. And I've got another little funky thing going on here. And uh, so I'm going to move yeah, this one down here. Yeah. So in order to avoid that, right now my tracking is set to 25. And if I just boost it up a bit, I just highlighted a few of the three lines. And I just hiked it up a bit just to get rid of that, that widow. Okay, you don't want your widow there. So I'm going to do the same thing. Just bump it up. And you shouldn't have to go more than a, a few points up to kind of clean that up. 